Uh, moving on. Many sports, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Joy here in Wisconsin asks, you guys both talk about your kids watching Star Wars. With that in mind, which characters of the Star Wars universe would you consider positive role model models for kids and why? So this is funny because we were kind of talking about one of your favorite characters before the show started. Oh, you're not. And I'm not going to pick her. Oh, good. But the reason I... I, <laughs> I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Princess Leia for me as the one that I want my kids to see, especially having a daughter, but also having a son. Because she is just the most fierce, badass person out there to me she's doing everything for the right reasons from the moment we meet her she doesn't take crap from anyone she she fights both physically and politically she's involved in everything i like Jin urso a lot who i was alluding to but the reason Spoilers. i wouldn't pick Jin urso is because everything that Jin urso does well leia also does well but leia does more so who, she she's the one that i would want my kids to look at and emulate and also nine numb Okay, yeah, because he's awesome. Um, I would pick, spoiler, Jyn So The reason that I like her is, again, I like Princess Leia too. Princess Leia might be number two or three on my list. But but for Jyn, my favorite part about her is that when the whole world, you know, her, her whole world, the Rebellion, is basically telling her she can't do it and she sticks up to them. I want that for my daughter. Where basically she's not afraid to trailblaze her own route to get to, to stand for what she knows is right. And that's why I give the, the edge to Jin on that one. Well, and the one thing I would say, if there are any kids out there, even though he does some bad things in the movie, if if you kids out there listening, if you can ever be Billy D. Williams, be Billy D. Williams. All right, we're to the time of the episode where we are going to move on to our Clone Wars review. We are on Season 1, Episode 2. It's called Rising Malevolence. And our intro today in the blue font is... Belief is not a matter of choice, but conviction. This episode was written by Steve Melching and directed by showrunner Dave Filoni. The story follows Jedi Master Plo Koon and the clones in his command as they discover a harrowing new weapon developed by the Separatist faction. The Malevolence, as it's called, is a gigantic and menacing ship with a new ion super cannon that can shut down the electronics of anything it hits. Neitzel, what did you enjoy about Rising Malevolence? Well, th this episode's good and it built on the things i liked in the last episode i'm 100 percent now bought in on the clones as individualized people that i care about because we have more clones that are in peril again this time and they show more depth and personality basically they attack plo coon's star destroyer i don't think maybe they call them star cruisers at that point but the predecessor to the star destroyer and they eject in these escape pods but they have also been neutralized by the ion cannon so they're just floating through space and they've left a, a very cool droid ship that floats around and opens up the ships and sucks all the troopers out to kill them. And Plo Koon is in one of these with three clone troopers. And they have, one of them is wisecracking, one of them is really scared and really wants to give up. But the main thing that I thought they hit on really well with the clones here that I really like is the clones themselves talking about how dispensable they are to the Jedi and to the Republic they don't think anyone's going to come to save them because it wouldn't make strategic sense to save them. They're just clones. And they say that a couple times in there, and Plo Koon kind of has to say, no, I I care about you guys. Like, I'm here to help you. I'm here to protect you, and we're going to get through this. Someone's going to come help, even though kind of in the end the only reason they saved him is because they had a Jedi with them. But I like that they themselves kind of recognized what they are, what they were created for, and what their purpose is, and it made me like them more. So I thought that was huge. Did you pick up on any of that, or did you like anything to do with the, the I, clones in there? I did, I and we'll get to more. I have a slight issue with it. We'll get to that in the second part of this review. But what I did enjoy about this particular episode is I think the escape pod, the stranded escape pod, is a great idea for an episode because it takes everything that we're scared of about space and it makes it a reality for these four characters, you know. They could run out of air, they could run out of food, and there's a good chance when the, the I call it the droid can opener comes for yeah, them, they could get sucked out into space. Uh, so I thought that was, like, really interesting and, and really cool. And it was a fun way to do a space battle that wasn't just laser blasts. Mm -hmm. I thought about you a lot while watching this one because mm -hmm. this didn't have an... Uh, when the Malevolence fires, there's a lot of blasting, but it didn't. the episode itself didn't have an overwhelming amount of blaster fire, which I know is something that annoys you in a lot of the episodes. Mm -hmm. This was a unique way to have them going through and basically sawing through these things. And then they have a really cool sequence where they finally find the ship that Plo Koon is in, and he actually goes into space 
with a couple of the clones, and they actually have a zero gravity fight sequence, which I thought was fun and different, not just ships flying through each other. So I thought I thought that was pretty fun. I also thought that this was a better use of Ahsoka and her resistance to doing what she's told. She def- wants to defy them because the council, who are kind of dicks, oh, yeah. well, tell them It's kind not- of the story of the old school Jedi, buddy. It is, because the Jedi Council says no one has survived these attacks, so we're not even going to bother to look for survivors. Just go do something else. But And Ahsoka freaks out and tells them, no, we have to, and Anakin kind of backhanded to the... Agrees with the council, but then immediately takes Ahsoka to on it. Which on I think own. is great for Anakin. Yes, this is a guy who who uh, understands some of the bullcrap going on in the Jedi Order and is playing the game and immediately kind of goes and was like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna go do this anyways. Forget you guys. I don't care what you think. Yeah, and it, it was cool to see Ahsoka challenge authority, not because she's being a bratty teenager, but because she believes in someone and she cares about someone, Flo Kunis, who brought her into the Jedi. That was a great part. If yeah. you go back and you look at the Clone War movie, there is interaction between Plo Koon and her. And so when this come, we come a couple episodes later, you can really understand, as we learn about that relationship, you can really understand why she cares so much. Yeah. You know, and there was like a hint of it. So I was wondering in the, in the movie, do those two know each other? They, there seems like a familiar relationship. And then a couple episodes more, you find out more about that and why she cares so much specifically about Plo Koon. Yeah, I also like too that they, in Palpatine's interactions with Anakin, he plants the seeds of dissent among Anakin towards the Jedi already. You know, we still have six episodes to go, or six seasons to go before Revenge of the Sith would technically happen, but he talks about how oh, you know, they're the ones that are making these decisions that you're not agreeing with, etc. Which is a great little little shade of what's to come right. much further down the road. Right. A couple little notes that I had that I really liked. In the opening scene, the way the animation shows how many stars there are against that black backdrop, it reminded me of some comments that you made about the starkness of the dark and the light in their color designs that really make things pop. There is a lot of detail in Plo Koon's skin and in his mask. The designs come, they, they feel like a uh, like an Indian or like a Buddhist sort of look to them from the art. And when you get down, you look at his actual mask, there's really, there's like small designs in there and they're fantastic. So I appreciated how much level, how, the level of detail that they which, had. Which is funny when you think about back to the movie that launches this series about how bad the animation is sure. and how much detail they put in this. Right. We talked about Plo Koon and Ahsoka's relationship. One other thing that I wanted to mention is that it's called the Obergato system. And I believe that's a call out to the Timothy Zahn series. I hadn't heard of Obergato Ray being used in any other capacity before the Empire, Heir to the Empire stuff. So if I made a mistake, I apologize, but I'm pretty they're sure. Not, they're not saying thank you in Portuguese? Well, yeah, they're not saying thank you. No, that's Obergato. <laughs> uh, but I, I just, I, I really like um when they tie into the eu it's kind of like a fun sort of nod to a great series that a lot of people care a lot about and so i thought it it just made me happy having read those books speaking of shout outs too there's a lot of lines in this one that are shout outs to lines in previous movies they're trying to fix something on the broken down escape pod and the clones are saying to each other no that one that one goes here that one goes goes there um i believe the droids do the the battle droids do the i've got a bad feeling about this and then there was another Leia one that I'm blanking on now. What does she say? Oh, they're coming through. There was that too that mm-hmm. Leia says in, in A New Hope. So they had a few of those kind of shout outs to other things mixed in in this one. You want a quick aside? I know this is not topical, but I never realized, I never thought of, you know, Admiral Akbar gets all the credit for saying it's a trap. Leia says that in Empire Strikes Back when she's calling out to Luke trying to warn him. Oh, yeah. I never realized that. So, again, those echoes that Lucas is talking about, that's coming through uh, both in the movies and in here. Do you want to talk about the bad stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we kind of mentioned my first main point. I'm a little shocked that the Jedi are such dicks and yeah. willing to abandon everyone. It, it doesn't seem to match what they do in the movies or some of the other things. It, it felt like something they just did because they needed that for the plot rather than for the world they're creating. so I don't, I don't know. The more I look at the movies, I kind of think that the Jedi are dicks. Yeah, but it was another Jedi. I mean, they have, they sent every single Jedi just to go rescue Leia, or not Leia, to rescue Padme and Anakin. Yeah. And actually, they only thought at the time, they sent every single Jedi to go rescue just Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones. They didn't know that Padme and Anakin had gone because they told them not to. Right. So they sent everyone there to do that, and then all they have to do is send one ship to go through some wreckage and find survivors. And they're like, nah, nah. let's not do it. 
So I thought that was a little alarming. Plo Koon is a very well-designed character, and he did some really good things in here. But some of the things he says can be a little hokey, and they reminded me of the Sphinx from Mystery Men. If you've ever seen that I, movie. I have seen it once. I don't really recall so, it. He's so, the guy that gets, says all the weird he things. He says it, you know, to, uh, you know, when you doubt your powers, you add power to your doubt. Right. <laughs> uh, when you balance attack hammer on your head, you can head off your enemy with a balanced attack. He's full of phrases like that. And Plo Koon had so that was like, when you ask for trouble, don't be surprised when the trouble finds you. He said a lot of things that were just kind of hokey that made me giggle he in my head. He had an awesome voice, though. Like, he could say anything. He had, like, the deep baritone voice. And and they I... slowed it down a lot, too. Yeah. But some of the things he said, I wish they would have refined those lines a little bit. The biggest thing I wanted to hit on, and this has been a problem through the last few things we've watched, this has the most horrific tone shift in a single moment that we've seen in these movies because before they find Plo Koons, they find another group of clone troopers and the, the can opener ship as we're referring to it mm. attaches and really dramatic movie or music cuts in as they're drilling through and the clone troopers are screaming cause they know they're about to be about to be killed and they bust through and it sucks them all into space and they die. And a droid immediately goes, goes there they go. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Oh, it was it was a horrific juxtaposition of the two moods they were trying to blend, and we. <laughs> and I did. I wasn't gonna bring it up at first because we've already talked about this type of thing. But I thought this was just such a terrible example of it that it jarred me when I saw it. I was like, that's not quite where we want to mix our humor and our Whoa. our seriousness. <laughs> 